we in a lab with Professor Seven. It's an educational about medical conditions. And this one is called exophthalmus. Exophthalmus. Now, exophthalmus, also known as proptosis, is a medical term for bulging or protruding eyeball or eyeballs. <clears throat> It's most often caused by thyroid eye disease. There's a small risk of optic nerve, which transmits signals from the eye to the brain becoming compressed. It might affect your sight permanently if it's not treated quickly. Again, it's a symptom of thyroid eye disease. It tends to improve over time, although this can take a number of years. There's a chance your eyes will continue to protrude if corrective surgery isn't carried out. Some people with exophthalmus are left with long-term vision problems, such as double vision. Um, you need to see an optometrist, optician, no matter what, if this happens. Because it could be an underlying cause, so treatment can be given. You know, then you get the diagnosis and cause. Um... If it's an eye disease, the immune system attacks the muscles and fatty tissue around the, and behind the eye, causing them to become inflamed. But when the eye literally pops out, that's something that's really serious. Now, the other condition is globe luxation. It's a medical term for when the eyeball protrudes or pops out of the eye socket. This rare condition can happen spontaneously or occur due to head or eye trauma. Um, if your eye pops out of the sockets, it is considered a medical emergency and should be treated by eye doctor immediately. Causes of globe, globe luxation. It's a lot of causes. Violet sneezing, exhaling while holding your nose and mouth closed. Um, again, thyroid eye disease, floppy eyelid. Eyelid syndrome, shallow eye sockets. <clears throat> and this here is just talking about how it's caused incomplete globe luxation that occurs when the eye pops out, affecting the optic nerve or extraocular muscles. A complete globe luxation occurs when the eye pops out and severs the optic nerve so that, you know, in the movies, you see that long thread connected to the eye. That's like your, um, Optic nerve, like optic wire. It says, do not attempt to force your eye back in place as this could lead to further complications. Contact the ophthalmologist for an emergency appointment as soon as possible. It is recommended if you have someone drive you, of course. Treatment for it. Um, they have to examine you, manual repositioning, surgery, um, some of the complications, the, the vision loss. Damage to the optic nerve, corneal abrasions, blef blepharospasm. We can click that and see what that is. BSP. It causes involuntary blinking. It's pronounced blepharospasm. Blepharospasm. So it's got some of the conditions. And, you know... I know a lot of people are trying to discredit this medical condition, but it is something that's real. Um, quick story. I remember when Gail King had interviewed Meg Thee Stallion about Tory Lanez and she lied on Gail King in front of national TV that she didn't have sex with him. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure how Gail King feel about that. But I know that that wasn't a good thing, um, you know, to interview someone and they come on your platform or your interview, your channel, big channel on TV, pub, national TV or whatever. And the person that you're interviewing is lying to you and capping and trolling. And it's allowed. It doesn't get checked. It's confusing because people can say they have all this money, all this money. Then something drastic happened and their source of money coming in may be disrupted. And as soon as it's disrupted, they call for people to help 
with the pond, help raise the kids because that money from what they was doing was their income to support their family. So now they're reaching out to everybody else, but then they'll turn around and say they make millions and millions of dollars. Now, it's so funny on behind the bar. I'm dropping names. And y'all know I'm talking about Hassan Campbell. Um, at the end of that interview he did, Hassan started talking about the dollar and, and I'm going to have to get out here and feed my family, go back to the block and <laughs> rock your snot box and all these animated things. Great episode behind a bar if you ever look at this. Um, and then behind the bar asked him, like, well, you good because you got property and businesses. And he never verified it. He just started talking about the dollar and how the dollar is going to fall. You know, not like, oh, yeah, those are assets that no matter what happened when you got assets, your assets might decrease in value, but it's still assets. That at certain times of disasters, they may go up in value. Instead of saying that, it just made me think like they really don't have that asset because every time shit hit the fan, they're asking for money to help do things. If I made a million dollars off of the Internet with my phone sitting in a car on the couch, man, well, I, I feel like a fool asking for someone as a man. And here I am. I'm stop saying it, man, about the single dad. I heard Five God was like, yeah, y'all a different breed. He just did a video. And I felt that. I appreciate that because a lot of times from the mothers I get. <clears throat> now you see how it is. I'm like, I always knew. But yeah, now I feel it. And I understand. And I'm not trying to bring nobody down. I'm not trying to correct nobody or stop nobody's hustle, man. It's just that. I see how people get behind things sometimes that is not the right thing from the Umar Johnsons to the polite, even my family and stuff. I had to check. I was like, you know, F polite. He ain't shit. Umar Johnson took people money and now nothing's ever manifested and it's all good with everybody. That's cool. I ain't get a nigga no money. Polite. I ain't listen to polite. I already knew what he was on because I knew who he was. It's a foreigner. And he started playing y'all and their whole idea was to sit down and see what they could do on the internet to make money. Him and Sonetta and them. Now when Sonetta was beefing with um, Hassan and it came up then, Hassan said he had houses, property, businesses and all that. He was bragging about that. And then when shit the fan, you're like, I need help taking care of my kids. Y'all messing up my, I'm trying to feed my family, my kids. I got to get this pond. He said it in that video. I got, I need to take care of this pond. So he was like asking, come to my Patreon. I'm not trying to diss you, bro. I'm just saying. And then these guys, y'all let them get on y'all platforms and lie. And y'all don't check them. And I know y'all, I know that the, the game, you want to be down with the biggest YouTuber, get the YouTube views and get, get their people who like them to come over and start. And he said, that's how he helps people. Everybody uses his sign. And take advantage of him. He is like what Gotti said, a crash test. Because everybody use him, get popular, get their views and, 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 and subscribers up. And then y'all diss and leave him. When y'all already knew, like Gotti keep claiming, like, oh, he diss and that. And I'm like, well, you messed with him knowing all the things that you're saying about him now. But it was cool when he was doing things and up in your channel and you getting where you at in the status now by feeding off of his energy and off of his channel. You ain't care. None of y'all don't care. Y'all know what he is. Y'all know who he is, what he do. But y'all continue to just let it happen and ride with it and support it until y'all can't support it anymore. And then when y'all fall out, it's not needed. Y'all done got what y'all wanted from him. Y'all done drained him. Y'all done used him. Y'all done played him. I don't know why he don't understand that. Every time the people be down with him on a lot. And everybody start riding the wave, riding the wave. Let me get over here on this side and ride this way. Because that's what content creators do. Y'all feed off of each other. Y'all call yourself journalists. I'm not saying that y'all don't. Y'all not like the journalists that be in the ground getting that information from the true source. Everybody get the information from whoever breaks it first and you find it on the internet. Then you snatch it up and make it yours. I done seen videos where I watch I Smoke and I know his background and then I see somebody run the same story and then he's trying to edit it. But that quick three seconds I see in the background. So he getting this story and stuff from I smoke. 
Like his back, I see the background. I see like this ain't no live story. Or you get it from TMZ, or you get it from ABC, CBS. That's not a true journalist. That's a that's an internet journalist, a YouTube journalist, and it's cool. I'm not trying to diss nobody. I don't drive, ride, ride no ways. I've been down with people on here who I started to show me love. I interacted as their channels grew. And I've been on people's panels so people don't understand that. I'll go on somebody's channel and talk and build and, and, and say stuff. And we talk about stuff. And I become cool with the channel. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? If they do other stuff that I don't like and I don't dig and I don't know about, that's different when you don't know. If I know somebody ain't a snake or whatever or doing this and that, and I have them on my channel and I'm interviewing them. And then later I find out, I'm like, dang, I ain't know. But a lot of y'all know. Y'all know what y'all dealing with, what y'all still alive for the views. And it's good. Be real with the people. But anyway, um, shout out to everybody I spoke on. Not trying to, I don't put clout chase. I'm not trying to rhyme. I'm just telling my people. I'm like, y'all keep, keep, keep making people millionaires from the, 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 um, Maurice, um, young pharaohs and everybody put all this money in. And as these people coming in, they talking about other people, they down in other people, they showing every people, everybody else's shortcomings and their hypocrisy and their all their downfalls and everything. And then when they turn around and do the same shit and show you the same imperfections after you didn't put money and lace their pockets and gave them mad views and time, which is precious time. Just talking about that to the geeky girl journal. Like you giving me your time now. And I'm just saying, man, y'all got to stop jumping out the windows and stop putting these on the pedestals. And I mean, everybody have flaws and we so busy building other people. Up. Help your family, help those in your community. You helping these niggas become millionaires and all they doing is getting rich off of y'all flossing and just talking, which may be inspiring and motivating. And that's good. But as long as it's inspiring and motivating to you to make you better and make you get a million. You let somebody get a million, you, you, the, the flock. You're not becoming a boss. Your life ain't turning around, but you steady listening to people and putting these people on the pedestals and lacing their pockets while they getting nice cars, nice houses and, and gold and, and just eating out and getting their house renovated and all kinds of shit. And you living in the fucking shack and you taking and listening to them and, and just putting them and fighting for them and all this stuff, man. And just they give you maybe 85 percent of the truth and then they'll give you five percent of lies, five percent of trolling, five percent of capping. And that messes up your integrity. Nobody's going to be 100 percent. I mean, just wake up, wake up like, damn, man. And it's enjoyable. It's an entertaining. It's YouTube. Bless one showed me a lot about it. And I really watch and mimic what he do. You know what I'm saying? I I, I get the, the YouTube gang, but I see the other sector don't do that. You don't see a lot of other creators from other places that do other things that don't talk about people that have content about something other. I don't care if it's eating, cooking, uh, movies, all the white, uh, white Chinese, other races, other sections of YouTube that you can watch time and they don't be jumping on other YouTube channels. They don't be on, you know what I'm saying? They don't do that. They do their own shit without none of the masses, none of the other bullshit without asking for a motherfucking dime. No super chat, no Patreon, no um, cash app, no PayPal. They just build a channel, get their sponsors and make their money. What about my dude to do the animal stuff? The young black man. What about the dude to do the tech stuff? Million dollar views, he be having sponsors. He don't ask the people for nothing. So nobody can say, you built me, I built myself. Y'all didn't lace my pocket. I don't have to feel guilty or sad or like I'm scamming or I played people to 85%. I played the 85. I got 50% of the 85 to just lace my pockets and let me make money by views and time and by super chat, cash app, PayPal. You know, some of them deserve it. Behind the bar, he works. He, you know, he put in that work. He entertained, dance, the songs, is cutting and scratching and 
sound effects like at least that i mean that nigga's doing something he built this fucking before he had any money from the youtube he invested his own money building his fucking bar himself without asking for a dime he used to have the folding table doing videos interview i think with Gotti back then i remember that's how i met him by i smoke these are years ago i'm a day one -er. i don't ride dicks man i just interact with these niggas and i learn these niggas and i get entertained by them and I express myself and I tell them things about me. And when it comes time to when I got, I need an outlet for what I'm doing. I know I'll have people's attention and that ain't dick riding or using anybody. That's developing relationships with people who I see blowing up and they see, I was a chat nigga that told them things about me on the back end. And now I'm here and now, okay, let me holler at dude, but I'm not going to ask nobody for shit on here. I don't give a fuck how broke I am and how hard it is for a single dad that I'm going to say for the last fucking time, raising a girl without no help. Uncles, uh, auntie, you know what I'm saying? People in my close circle, my mom. Yeah, but I'm like, I'm, I'm over half a century with an eight year old. I'm not going to ask my 80 year old mom to watch my daughter while I go out drinking and get some pussy. My daughter's always with me. I understand why chicks and bitches don't want to fuck with me. Cause they'd be like, we're going to do something. We're going to do something as uh, we can go somewhere. We can drink. We can go somewhere. Baby girl goes there. If you want to hit some sativa or something like that, but it's always going to be me and her. Cause I don't put that on nobody because it's my responsibility. Nobody was there when I was getting, um, sex. <laughs> I was about to get raw. And I'm just saying, that's just me. It's there for me. I got help, but I'm like, I'm not putting that burden and pressure unless it was an emergency and it need to be done, but not for my flesh or my entertainment. I be needing a break every time, but I'm not going to. That's not their responsibility. Mom, 80 years old is too fucking old. I got kids grown. Everybody got kids grown. How my motherfuckers and got their kids out the door. And I'm about to bring my little one over. No matter how entertaining, how good, how smart. They don't give a fuck, but I just don't do it. They welcome. Yeah, bring her by. I'm not. Nah, she good. So you have to be with daddy with everything 24 seven, all life is around daddy. And then daddy, when he get his time and break mental thing, I'm watching YouTube trying to support people. And I see shit and I see this world and I see my black people, how we just gravitate and push the most negative shit, the most fake and unreal shit, because it looks good and sound good. Although it might have a lot of flaws and we'll hang around it to get where we want to get and do what we want to do and blow up our channel. And then when it ain't rolling no more, fuck them. Now let me expose them. Tell all this shit that I knew about. But at the time I'm rolling with him, I was going to keep his secrets. I was going to keep all this bullshit because I'm getting something out the game. I can't roll with that. If motherfuckers fake and phony and doing shit, I'm not rolling with you. I'm not fucking with you. And I'm not going to be just, I don't give a fuck where you can get me in life. If you're not right on one side that I know that I want, that's a part of me, that my honor my morals and ethics is not the same as yours. And I'm going to co-sign with you. That I can't do that as a man. That's fake. So if we ain't got the same morals and ethics and we ain't got the same boss mentality, if we ain't got the same loyalty and mind thinking and shit, I'm not going to roll with you to get somewhere where I need to be because that's not me. That's what being a man is. Have a good Sunday.